What's going on guys, Super Insane 18 here, and as promised, I am bringing you the updated Mermail deck profile that I've been working on for the last week. As you already know, I went uh, top eight at my local end of the year tournament playing a blind going second build, which I did mostly as a meme, but then I realized that this deck can actually do some really cool things. I showed you guys the combos on Wednesday, so let's go ahead and show you the build. So we're gonna start things off with three copies of Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince. He is the heart and soul of the deck. Uh, by himself, he lets you search for two cards, which is just incredible. Uh, not to mention, he can also reborn your Atlanteans, which didn't really happen in any of the combos that I showed you guys. That's more of for when you're going for game, you'll uh, be able to reborn your higher attack Atlanteans, uh, like Dragoons, to be able to deal a lot of damage, but just a really incredible card. Followed by three copies of Heavy Infantry. Heavy Infantry is just a really good utility card, as you saw in the combos. He does give you an additional normal summon, which means that you are able to just kind of extend even further. But not just that, if you use him for the uh, cost of any of your water monsters, he will just pop a card on the field, which is really nice. Uh, then we have the best card in the deck, Atlantean Dragoons, a not once per turn search of any Sea Serpent, so you can do some really good shenanigans with this, not to mention the fact that it is a level 4, and with there being some good rank 4 uh, water XYZ monsters, and attaching this as cost and getting your search on top of the effects that you already get from those monsters, just makes it really, really powerful. But that is it for the Atlanteans, on to the actual Mermails themselves. We are playing one copy of Abyss Gund and one copy of Abyss Pike. Now, Gund is really good for recurring on following turns, being able to bring back your Mermails that you either linked away or were destroyed during your opponent's turn doesn't really matter. Um, and Pike is really cool because it can search any of your level 3s, which the level 3s in the deck are going to be the Abyss Gund, uh, you're going to see later on the Deep Sea Minstrel and the Swap Frog. But more importantly than that, Pike is actually like the best bridge for Small World. Um, which I am working on a small world chart for you guys. Uh, it will actually be on my Patreon available for the lowest tier, so maybe consider checking that out. I am still working on it. I have them all written down uh, in a spreadsheet. I just haven't made the graphic look pretty yet, but there's like 352 different small bridge lines, uh, which is really cool. So hopefully you guys will check that out. Um, but he works really well as just like the middle bridge into pretty much anything in your deck, and it's actually just kind of insane. Um, but then we are also on three copies of Abysteus, um, probably the best Mermail card because it just requires one send, um, and then it will search you for either your Gund or your Pike. Um, but the fact that it requires just the one send means that you can do some really cool things. You can send the Dragoon to search, you can send the Atlantean infantry to pop, um, and then it just puts a body on board so and gets you another body as well so it like replaces itself. Uh, really good card. Uh, we are playing only one Mermail Abyss Megalo. This kills me inside uh, because Mermail has been my favorite deck for 10 years now since it came out in 2013. Um, and Megalo was always the best one because he was your OTK pusher. Uh, but we are in a format now where you can't really just reliably go second in OTK. So you got to kind of hold the reins back a little bit. And he's just in there as a one of for your following turns. That way you can push when you need to. Um, and that's it for the Mermails. On to the other monsters. We've got three copies of Deep Sea Diva, the absolute best starter in the deck. Uh, I realized that because D.Va is the best starter in the deck, you can do some very similar shenanigans to what Sprite does, as you guys saw in the combo tutorials, which is what kind of sparked the idea for this deck, so yeah, definitely need to max out on the D.Va. Uh, then we are playing two copies of Deep Sea Minstrel. Now, Deep Sea Minstrel is really cool uh, because you can do things like snipe a Havenus out of your opponent's hand, or like any other hand trap, doesn't really matter. You just get to look at your opponent's hand and banish a card until the end of the turn, uh, but more importantly than that, it sends a water monster from your hand as cost, so you can also use it to send your Atlanteans to get their effects as well. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do is you can send like the Dragoons and get a search, or you can send the Nimble Angler and get two summons like I showed you guys in one of the combos. Um, but that's it for the Deep Sea Monsters. We have three copies of Nimble Beaver and two copies of Nimble Angler, uh, and that's the Nimble Engine. The reason you want to do this is because you kind of do want to open some of them, but you also want to leave some in your deck. That way you can use stuff like Sprite Sprint to send the Angler and start off your combos. Um, but that's why you want to play two of the Angler. That way you can open one and still be safe with one in your deck. And playing three of the Beaver means that you can still open a Beaver and have two Beavers left in your deck for an Angler. Um, so it's just a really good number there. I don't think I would change that. 
And then we have three Swap Frogs. Now, Swap Frog is really cool in this deck because you are actually playing water, uh, which means you can very, very easily get this on your side of the field. Um, so it is just a way to continue extension as well, but it also is your way into Toad, as I showed you guys in the combos. Um, and then we have our just blanket sea serpents. We have one copy of Lapis Dragon. Really good because it just summons itself uh, if it's added, so... Uh, yeah, not really much needs to be said. The other cool thing that you can do is if you want to put a body on board, like let's say you're trying to survive a turn, uh, you can actually add it back to your hand uh, from the graveyard off of Totally Awesome, and it will summon itself when you add it from grave to hand as well. So not just from deck to hand, which is really cool. Uh, and then we have one Mulan Glacier, the Elemental Lord. Uh, this is a love-hate relationship that I've always had with this card, uh, but it's really cool now because a lot of the combos you can do, you can actually make Dweller before resolving the effect, or you can actually put Dweller on the field and then chain it to the effect of Mullen Glacier like I showed you guys in one of the combos. Uh, so you don't have to activate your opponent's tier monsters, you can just make them play down cards, and I think that's really cool. And to finish off the monsters, we are playing three copies of Gamma Seal. Um, this is the only going second card that I really have in the main deck. I feel like you can pick apart boards relatively easily, uh, since you have the ability to use the heavy infantry. Um, but that doesn't always work out, because tier monsters will reborn themselves. But, I mean, it is what it is, but having Gamma Seal available to just kind of you know, get rid of something, and then it's also really easy to get in your hand because of a card like Small World. So, like, one thing that I did in testing was I actually had a Gama Seal in hand, and I had a Small World plus another way to bridge into a Gama Seal. So, what I did was I Gama Sealed my opponent's threat, then I used my uh, Mermail cards and my uh, Atlantean cards to use send infantry to the graveyard and pop the Gama Seal. And then I small world it into a second Gamma Seal and Gamma Sealed another monster that they had. So I was really able to just clear a board and I think it was good enough. Um, I do kind of miss not having more going second cards, but you kind of can't. You need everything that's in the deck in order to reliably go first. That is the downside of Mermail is you either have to commit to going second fully or commit to going first fully. There really isn't a healthy in between. Um, but that's it for the monsters. Onto these spells, we have one Abyss Scale of the Mizuchi. Uh, this is kind of cool because going first, you can just put out a Spell Negate if you have enough of the materials to summon out your Megalo. Uh, but more importantly, it helps you push for damage because it will give your Megalo that extra 800 attack, which when he attacks twice, changes it from 48 damage to 6400 damage. Uh, so yeah, just that. Uh, we are playing one copy of Call by the Grave just to make sure we don't get hit by any dumb hand traps. Uh, not that we really would. Most of the decks are playing Bistial over conventional hand traps just to stop tier limit so it's kind of a safe bet that you're not going to get hand trapped but you can also use this to stop a tier limit monster so it's just a really good card to have uh, next we have two copies of triple tactics talent this is just a flex spot i really didn't know what to put in here so uh, this felt like a really good option especially when you don't have a lot of going second cards uh, you can use this going second to break a board even more by stealing one of their monsters or if they stop you with any of their negates on field you can draw more cards or whatever it ends up being but you can make this anything you want this is just what i threw in at the last minute because i was at 38 cards um, and then the final card is the three copies of Small World. This card is insane. Like I said, the chart that I'm working on has over 350 different Small World bridges. Uh, so you can really just search anything and it's just absolutely crazy. It's the best consistency card that the deck has. I didn't think it would be that good until I sat down and started looking at all the bridges, but it's absolutely crazy. So that is the main deck. It is 40 cards. Let's show you guys the extra. Okay, so starting off the extra, we actually only play two synchros. We play one one copy of Tatsunoko and one copy of Baron de Flore. Now the Tatsunoko is a little strange, but uh, the reason it's in here is actually because of a card that I cut, um, but you can still use it, so you can really replace this with anything. I just decided to leave it in because I didn't know what else to replace it with, um, but I was playing Poseidra the Atlantean Dragon because it's a really good OTK card, but I realized that for going first it was a little bit of a brick because what you could do if you went first, in theory, is use the Tatsunoko as a bridge into the Baron. Uh, by summoning Diva and going into Neptibus, Neptibus could add the Poseidra. You would synchro the Diva and the Neptibus into the Tatsunoko, and then Tatsunoko can let you synchro from your hand. So that, which is a level 3, plus Poseidra, which is a level 7, goes into the Baron, but you really don't need to do that. It's just not optimal, honestly. So you can replace this with whatever you want. Um, then I have the one copy of Gigantic Sprite. This is to ensure that we can go into our Swap Frog. You guys saw the combos. We are playing two copies of Totally Awesome. So 
this is kind of multifunctional in this deck. Uh, as you saw in some of the combos, you are very easily able to end on double Totally Awesome. But more importantly than that, Totally Awesome adds back a water monster from gr uh, grave to hand when it is sent to the grave. So you're able to recur so many resources by just having multiple copies of this. And that's what really lets you play into the longevity, uh, lets you kind of come back and hit them on the clapback. So I think two toad is perfect. Uh, onto the fours, we are playing Abyss Dweller and Bahamut Shark. Again, you saw how easily these things were made because we play another card that will just freely summon two level fours, uh, which is really cool. Um, so if you're up against here, the Abyss Dweller is obviously the way to go. If you're up against anything else, Bahamut Shark will let you end on double totally awesome because you'll summon a toad off of the Bahamut Shark, and then you'll summon a toad off of the Swap Frogs that you make with the Gigantic. So just really cool. But the coolest part about them is that since they are water monsters, you get your Dragoon's effect whenever you activate these because Dragoons just has to be sent to the graveyard as cost to activate a water monster. Since the detach is cost for both of these cards, then you get it, and I just think that's really awesome. Uh, then the last XYZ we're playing is the Mermail of Biscayos. This card is actually kind of crazy. Um, there aren't many combos that really are like one card or two card combos to get into it. You have to have a really good hand to make this on turn one, but if you can, uh, it's usually going to be at 3600 attack because you'll have the equip spell off of the Megalo, but not just that, it is a skill drain on legs for anything with less attack than it, and level five or higher monsters cannot attack. So this one card kind of offers you like three different things. You get a spell negate, you get a skill drain effect for anything with lower attack, and the level five or higher monsters not being able to attack is insane because all the tier limit fusions are level five or higher. So this is a really good card to make turn one against tier limit. Uh, but that's it for the XYZs onto the links. We are playing the one copy of Bujinki Ahashima. This is the card that freely summons the two level fours. You'll summon a Dragoon from your hand and grave, and that lets you get into your level or rank four XYZs. Araya the Water Charmer is really just kind of utility. Um, this is just, you know, th this can also technically be a flex spot. Uh, you can make this whatever you want, but I felt like it gave enough for the deck that it was worth playing. Uh, the Marincess Coral Anemone is actually really cool for recursion and as well as an OTK play, um, which I'll show you guys a little bit later, uh, but just being able to reborn a water locks you into water is not the end of the world. Uh, we are playing the one copy of Mermail Abyss Lacia. Uh, this is just kind of really cool because it gives you some of that recursion as well. You're able to send a card to add a Mermail, meaning that you'll have enough for the clapback. Um, and then if it's sent, you can also do something like send it, or if it's sent to the graveyard or destroyed in your possession, I believe, uh, you can send the Dragoon and get another search or send the infantry and get a pop. Um, so yeah, just kind of really cool. Uh, we are playing Sprite Elf and Sprite Sprint. These are part of the combos uh, since we are playing a lot of level twos and finishing things off, we are playing the World Sea Dragon Zelantis. Uh, this is a really cool OTK play because with the Coral and Nenemy, uh, when you lock yourself into waters and then you summon out the World Sea Dragon Zelantis, you can't reborn any of your opponent's monsters unless they're water, so that lets you go for a really cool OTK, and that is it for the extra. And there you guys have it. That is going to be my updated Mermail deck profile for the January 2023 format. This is honestly the most fun that I've had with Yu-Gi-Oh! in a long time, and I think it's entirely because I'm revisiting a past deck, one that I hold near and dear to my heart, so hopefully that shows in these videos and you guys see the passion that I have for Mermails as a whole. I just love this deck so much, and the fact that it can still do things like this 10 years after its conception honestly just blows my mind. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and if you did, you know the deal. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, share with friends, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. Like I said, the Small World chart will be on there in the next couple of days. It's all written down. I just got to work on the graphics. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.